What's going on everyone? I'm Saba and thanks for tuning into my channel, Savoring with Saba, where I'm sharing recipes that are healthy, simple, and most importantly delicious. And this is the Thanksgiving Takeover Edition where I'm getting you ready for the holiday. And what better way to prepare than with these mini pumpkin cheesecakes? So let's jump right into today's video. All right guys, it's time to get started. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, Cheesecake is my least favorite dessert, but I have been making this pumpkin cheesecake recipe for the past three Thanksgivings and it's been a fan favorite. So I thought I'd share it with you. And don't worry, if you are kitchen challenged, AKA the struggle is real in the kitchen, I've got you. I'm gonna show you step by step how to complete this recipe because cooking can be fun and easy. You ready? I'm ready. Get excited. Okay, let me calm down because I just, I'm excited that Thanksgiving's here, but I can't believe that Thanksgiving is here. So anyway, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. I'm already doing that. And I've laid out all of my ingredients. Usually when I'm making some type of baked good or dessert, you will see that I'm gonna separate the wet and dry ingredients. I'll mix them separately and then combine them when I'm ready. For this recipe, there's no need. I'm really gonna just dump all the ingredients in one bowl and mix them together. So I have my cream cheese, my softened cream cheese. And what you wanna do to soften it, well there are two ways. The first, you can leave it out to let it thaw at room temperature. But guys, I don't have time for that. I need to be in and out of the kitchen. So I put this in the microwave between 30 to 60 seconds to like get it nice and smooth. Now it's a little movable, but it's not runny. And it's like, like soft. So you can easily mix this by hand. So this is good to go. And now I have my eggs. And I'm literally just going to mix the eggs and the cream cheese together until it's nice and smooth. cream cheese and egg mixture is nice and smooth. The key here is to get all of the lumps and bumps out of this mixture. So I am good to go. And now we're just gonna add in all the other ingredients. So I'm gonna take my measuring cup, I'm getting my Lakanto sweetener, because I don't use regular sugar, it has a whole bunch of bad things for you, like bloating, weight gain, bad for heart health, acne, anybody got time for that? So I've really cut back and cut out like regular traditional sugar in my diet. I'm gonna take my sea salt and I'm literally just going to put a couple of dashes in there. Now I have my pumpkin puree. Now y'all, if y'all are in your kitchens and you have leftover pumpkin pie spice from last year, step away from those cans because pumpkin pie filling is not the same as pumpkin puree. Pumpkin puree is basically the inside of the pumpkin that's been pureed or mixed up. Pumpkin pie filling is basically a filling that has been altered through sugars and other additives to make it super sweet. You're gonna get a different taste and a completely different texture if you try to substitute, substitute pumpkin pie filling with pumpkin puree. And the other thing is, if you're looking for pumpkin puree, if you see the label pure pumpkin, it's the same thing as pumpkin puree. And y'all, I know we're getting down to the wire. So if you cannot find pumpkin puree, guess what? Just substitute it for um, like sweet potato. Sweet potato puree is just as good. So this is all good to go. And I'm gonna take my vanilla extract. I'm gonna add a little bit in there. Like so. And then last but not least, I am going to use my pumpkin pie spice. Let me see if the camera will pick it up. Will it work? Will it work? Did it work? Uh, sort of. There we go. Maybe? I think it did. But it's pumpkin pie spice. So I'm just going to take some of that. This is basically done. I've been using this so much this season. So at least I have a backup. But they're really hard to find these days. I have all the ingredients in the one bowl, like I said, and now we're going to mix 
all of this together. All right guys, so I've already mixed the remaining ingredients together. It's looking amazing, smelling divine. Can you tell I'm excited? And I have my cupcake pan with me and I've already lined these with silicone liners. If you don't have silicone liners, you can either grease up the cavities or place paper liners in instead. So here we are. I'm gonna use my ladle. If you don't have a ladle, guess what? Work with what you got and use a spoon. And what you wanna do is just take some of this batter and fill the cavities with it. Woo. It can get a little messy, just FYI. And you don't want to fill it all the way because you don't want the batter to like topple over when it's baking in the oven. I finished filling the cavities with the batter and now I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake. I took my mini pumpkin cheesecakes out of the oven. They're looking good, they're smelling amazing and now it's time to let them cool completely. So typically this takes about two to four hours. I know, ain't nobody got time for all that. So to help speed up the process, I'm gonna put mine in the fridge. All right guys, I just took the mini pumpkin cheesecakes out of the fridge and they are good and ready to go. I'm going to show you what one looks like. I still kept them in the liners. I'm just going to pull the liners. Guys, this looks amazing. It smells real good and pumpkin-y. How cute. So I'm just going to put a couple on my plate and I'll be right back. This is how you make mini pumpkin cheesecakes. I told y'all this was gonna be easy. So head on over to my website, sabringwasaba.com to get the full ingredients list and step-by-step -step instructions. And if you recreate this recipe, I wanna see it. So tag me on Instagram and Facebook at Saba Savers. And everyone, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have an amazing Thanksgiving. Stay safe and happy savoring.